Cattle raiding culture of the Atekel cluster is a traditional exercise. This tradition has of late you know, turned bloody and violent in the sense that there has been lots of proliferation of light and heavy weapons given to the communities. Hence, the bloodshed, the, 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 the killing and maiming, the raping and destruction of property. The Turkana are a group of nomadic people from Kenya that depend entirely on livestock for their everyday source of livelihood. The Turkana form part of the pastoralist groups of Southern Sudan, Kenya and Uganda called the Atakere Cluster. These are the Gie and Dodoth of Uganda, the Toposa of Southern Sudan and the Turkana of Kenya. Cattle raiding is part of the culture of the Atakere cluster communities. However, this culture has slowly transformed from being a viable activity into a source of conflict amongst these pastoralist communities. You can either die in the race, you can either get rich or remain poor. Because as you go to raid the cattle from the race, yours also will be raided at one time. Seeds of Peace Africa, therefore, seeks to transform these acts of violence and the actions of the community to bring peace amongst the Atikere cluster. We are a Seeds of Peace organization. Ours is to inculcate and plant the seeds of peace in the hearts and minds of children and young people and to convince them to become agents of peace and, um, and, and the social transformation in a non-violent way. When I went out there trying to see what the programmatic part of this project entails, for example in terms of reaching out to a certain number of, uh, number of reformed warriors, uh, it was difficult for me to achieve all this number because uh, as I said earlier, the idea was new, the idea was contrary to their usual livelihood. Well, we have used sports as the vehicle for mobilizing the young people. Sporting as an activity that provides the youth with alternative forms of, you know, heroism. The International Peace and Sports Exchange Program was started in the year 2007. The exchange program was a partnership between the Netherlands Sports Association, Seeds of Peace Africa and partner cross-border organizations. NSA and SOPA are engaged on this exchange that explores, you know, what I may call successful stories of using sports as a means of enhancing a peaceful co coexistence in the community.
This exchange program has seen us uh, take three uh, peace and sports uh, facilitators to the Netherlands way back in 2012. And uh, most recently, we've seen the exchange uh, component bringing in six uh, sports uh, facilitators from the Netherlands to Lokichogio. The purpose of the program was to build capacities and to train the cross-border peace and sports facilitators and the Netherlands sports leaders. This is done through an exchange program training workshop. <laughs> When starting this whole process of exchange, we have been looking from, for participants from organizations that are involved in sports and community development. And these organizations uh, could, could differ. Uh, they could be either on the implementing side, so for instance, uh, municipalities from the, ne from the Netherlands that are actually carrying out sport for community development activities, but they could also represent uh, educational institutes that train sports leaders and sports managers to function within community development settings. Uh, the idea behind sending me uh, over to Kenya and learn about this project is to involve me. Uh, it's important for me to learn what's happening, uh, learn about the methods, so I can teach my students and uh, I can, I hope, uh, make them enthusiastic to start working in this line of work. The exchange program is tailored to impart knowledge to the Dutch participants and the local sports facilitators on how to use sports to nurture peace. The Dutch participants are expected to exchange ideas on best practices with the local sports facilitators. They are taught on methodology for peaceful coexistence and tools necessary to use to make sports effective in their respective places of work. Some of the models include conflict analysis with tools such as the conflict tree and the mapping tool. The participants are also taken through culture and value-based sports. Conflict happens in different step stages. There's trigger, there's, a, there's, a, there's confrontation, there's crisis, and then there is a ceasefire. It is important to conduct um, a, a conflict analysis. And we had to do this with the warriors. The participants are then taken through the rules of a peace and sports facilitator in the community. You need also to facilitate for dialogue meetings. Hmm? When called upon, hmm? you need to facilitate for peace dialogue meetings. Hmm? As a peace and sports facilitator, you facilitate. Let's say you you become a leader when there is something arising in the community and there is a meeting. You facilitate, you chair with them. You don't decide but you give them room to express their feelings and <coughs> get out what they intend to say at a certain meeting. When you bring warriors from the different clans and you combine them, you give them you, you give them change, yeah? Like the way that we have been seeing this feeling. You give them uniform, you give them shoes, then you play. Please, don't steal the cows of someone. Yes, another way, another way around. Oui. So that's now, this is now, and then you say, you, you advise him, please. Better to make business, rather than going and steal someone's cows. Well, a lot of qualities go into in terms of uh, the recruitment of the peace and sports facilitators. And that I believe key among them is First, knowing the language, uh, knowing the terrain where actually uh, these warriors exist, and then to build trust within the within the peace and sports facilitator and the warrior, they need to have come from the same uh, location. They know the language, they have the ambition, they know the content of the uh, conflict resolution mechanisms, they know content on uh, on sport, and more more actually above it all is that they are motivated. Uh, by being able to work with the pastoralists themselves. The qualities of a peace and sports facilitator include being creative and innovative, a role model, a team leader, and be diplomatic to the community. Uh, the training here in Kenya has been uh, consisting of two major components, the com component of theory and the component of practice. 
Um, and throughout this, th th this whole process has been guided by uh, th th through a participatory approach, where the, the learning questions of the participants were uh, the guiding the guiding principle. After the sports facilitators and the participants are taught the theoretical aspect of the peace and sports program, they are taken to the field where they apply what they have learned with the local community settlement in Turkana. The Dutch participants are taken through the culture of the Turkana people. go to a meeting or if, you, if you go to a village where you've never been before it will be just a short arrival and here when you arrive all the women all the men they are there everybody sitting they prepared something some incredible dance for you and did some singing and everybody presented himself certainly about the food they kill a goat, how they kill a goat, how they prepare it. Yeah. Uh, it's not uh, like we do in, in Holland, but it's uh, effective. They then engage in a sporting activity with the warriors and the women in a bid to interact with the community. Participants learn how the sports facilitators relate with the sports leaders in the Turkana settlement. Uh, we've got channels whereby we have the crowd leaders and we have the sports leaders. Uh, we link from peace and sports facilitator, we link through the sports leader whereby the channel of mobilization is done. We have also the key leaders like uh, in girls team we have leaders who are like captains or who are team leaders and in the warriors team we have also leaders. <laughs> You don't need a lot to survive because you see that uh, if they're together uh, with the families and with the animals, on one way they are happy. Well, we, we uh, played with the children and we played with a, a cold of frisbee and they have a lot of fun just with a little bit, a little thing. And the learning experience was, was very big. Uh, first of all, um, you see that uh, people here are, do not have a lot of property and money, etc. But they're all friendly and open and warm and they're rich in their way. Um, and, and that's a very big learning experience for me. Uh, represent the representatives of the Dutch organizations will go back to their respective organizations, will present their find the findings of the, of the exchange the past week and will prepare for the first uh, training visit of Kenyan facilitators to the Netherlands in uh, 
uh, the spring of 2014. Um, this training visit will mainly serve uh, to s further spread the knowledge and experience within the Peace and Sports Programme to the, to the peers and colleagues of the representatives that have now been able to undergo this training in Kenya. This is a program that is going to go on for the next uh, three years or so. And uh, we hope that uh, through this we will develop mechanisms for continued sharing of experiences across the globe. For the Dutch participants, this is not only an experience of the Turkana culture, but a learning platform that has enabled them gain knowledge on the use of sports in enhancing peace.